We believe this could be a foundational document that will inform how we will build a more thriving city for all in the decade to come, a critical decade. In seeking feedback, we made sure to ask members of uh, RRHA communities what they thought about our draft plan. The community ambassadors, some who are with us today, canvassed all six of the big six communities. Now, my friend James Davis, who I saw earlier, James Davis is the leader of the community ambassadors. He's always honest with me. I respect that. And after the canvassing, he said to me, look, it's hard to get people to think hard about what they want to see in the future when they're scared to step out their front door. When their children can't play outside after 4 p.m., when they're in constant fear of losing their lives or the lives of their babies, all people want to feel safe. And that struck me. Historically, underinvested communities in Richmond are in survival mode. 24 7, seven days a week, 52 weeks out of the year, 365 in survival mode. And it is incumbent upon me and everyone gathered here today to not just acknowledge this crisis, but name it as something we can solve. Indeed, something we can't afford not to solve. Ladies and gentlemen, gun violence is a public health crisis. And to address this crisis, it will require a mobilization of people, programming, and investment. That's why today I'm honored to announce that we are introducing a resolution that declares gun violence a public health crisis for expedited consideration on May 24th before City Council. This resolution is a unified acknowledgement that gun violence is a public health crisis with deeply rooted causes. But it's more than just an acknowledgement. It's an agreement from every person standing up here to build on the progress we've made and to redouble our efforts to address the inequities that lead to gun violence. And let me be completely real with you. It's also a tool. A resolution with broad support, the support you see here around me today, tells funders and the state and federal governments Richmond is serious about the public health crisis of gun violence. Richmond is rallying around prevention and ready to mobilize. That means more support for our city to address this crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, above all, the resolution is a commitment. It's a commitment to those Richmonders in our communities, especially black communities, who have for too long lived with the fear of violence in their own neighborhoods where they lay their heads at night. This coalition that you see before you, comprised of elect leaders, public servants, community members, and law enforcement officials is committed to strengthening our violence prevention and intervention framework alongside our community-rooted approach. We want to wrap our arms around Richmond to keep them safe and to lift them up. 
This resolution will empower, empower us in that commitment, and I look forward to its adoption on May 24th. And I look forward to the action that it enables in the months and years to come. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium Dr. Michael Abatanos, the medical director of the VCU Medical Center and VCU's Injury and Violence Prevention Program to speak to the mission and progress of the Gun Violence Prevention Framework Workgroup. Dr. Abatanos. Thank you, Mayor Stoney. It's absolutely my privilege and honor to stand here with you and the community, but also I see as an obligation. A few reflections on behalf of myself as the head of the VCU Level 1 Trauma Center, which has served this community over the past 40 years, and as representative of VCU and VCU Health, a task of which I'm entrusted. I can sum up my remark in few words. We are 100% committed. What is the hardest thing for a trauma surgeon to do? You would think working on a young patient with multiple gunshot wounds and complex injuries, trying to save his or her life with injury to the heart or to the lungs or to the abdomen, I admit to you that is hard. And it's something that unfortunately we are doing now on a daily basis. And we must have an amazing coordinating team with greater than 250 years of collective trauma experience to save such a person which is what we do at the VCU Level 1 Trauma Center. But despite all those skills, experience, and resources, we often come short. I'll submit to you that what actually is harder for the trauma surgeon is to talk to that patient's mom and family, to look into her eyes and see that flicker of hope go away. When you tell her that her daughter or son did not make it, to hear the scream that will never leave you, and I tell you, I still hear each and all of them. The second hardest thing is that when we are talking to that mom is to look at the other young men and women around her who are just waiting for you to say that their brother, sister, or friend did not make it. To see them walk out of that emergency room with a face of confusion, deep grief, and most importantly, deep anger. You look and wonder, how will they respond? Do they have the support, the capacity, the resilience, the community structure and resources to handle such devastating news? How do we respond as a community? Is there a framework that will help us react as a community to prevent such injuries or to mitigate their impact and the cyclical retaliatory impulse? Are there crisis responders that can immediately intervene during the critical window of opportunity to prevent retaliation and interrupt the violence cycle? Are there credible community outreach messengers, violence interrupters that could have identified, intervened in community conflict and prevented this crisis from happening? More importantly, are there community pathways and evidence-based strategies to effectively address social issues that impact gun violence and provide positive youth development? including increasing opportunity for employment, mentorship, and other supportive services. The fact that our state, our commonwealth, our home has seen more than 1,000 of our friends, family, and neighbors suffer gunshot wound-related injuries, and that our trauma center has seen 51% increase in gun-related admission last year. It's, this is mind-boggling and calls for a wide community response. So what is needed is the response to the Mayor Stoney's call to action and to call out our situation for what it really is, a public health crisis that demands our highest attention. And we applaud the Mayor and the City Council for this important declaration and the mission forward. Gun violence is not only a health care issue, but a humanitarian crisis. We have known this. We have lived this. We are living it. We are suffering with it. We have tried to deal with this but not always together in a coordinated fashion. So what is needed now is an innovative approach to improve institutional services, create access 
to community-based resources and engage and empower the community to contribute to the change that they want to see. In collaboration with residents and diversity of stakeholders, VCU and VCU Health System in partnership with the City of Richmond are working to establish an evidence-based public health response to address the underlying social, economic, and system factors that promote gun violence. Our goal is to decrease violence rates by engaging in system-level changes and addressing both individual and community-level behavior and norms. Collectively, together, under great leadership, from Osito Oregbu from, uh, from the mayor's office, Tori Edmonds and Rochelle Hanley from VCU, among many, many others. We are working toward the planning, the design, and the implementation of the framework based on a shared community-focused vision. We have named this model Richmond Gun Violence Prevention Framework. At the core of the framework is the community voice. We have guaranteed that those directly impacted by gun violence, survivors of gun violence, parents who have lost children to violence, residents who live in the most impacted communities, and direct service providers have a seat at the table throughout the planning and implementation of the framework. VCU and VCU Health applaud the mayor's acknowledgement as it recognizes the importance of the issue and the need to bring together agencies, organizations, and communities to battle this issue that is devastating cities and countries across the country and we will be the model for other cities. We all have a role, no exception. Gun violence is 100% preventable. We cannot do it alone, we must do it together. So VCU and the VCU Trauma Center and the entire VCU Health System is proud to stand with the city of Richmond as a partner in addressing this critical issue. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. I had some notes prepared, but I'm gonna just uh, start off by thanking the doctor for coming out here today, because something that I've um, realized while he was speaking is that we share something in common. Just like the police, he and the wonderful staff at VCU, they deal with one victim at a time, one shooting at a time, one bullet at a time, one unnecessary, one senseless death at a time like we do. I thank you and thank your staff for stepping up at this time. My comments will be brief and short, for I also have the uh, burden of actually coming before the media one incident at a time and speaking. So I'm pretty sure where people know where I stand with this, but when it comes down to this resolution, it is another step in the right direction for as opposed to, we should be looking at the prevention and intervention as opposed to the investigation and prosecution of preventing violent crime here in Richmond. It is an intervention, in pro an intervention and prevention that we see the best and the most need and the most quality of life for our citizens in Richmond. It is the most effective way that we should use our energy, our talents, our ideas, our creativity, and our courage to act. It is where, as the mayor has said many times before, where dreams are built, where the restoration of hope occurs, and where the better of Richmond lies. We are doubling down on our commitment to tackle gun violence here in Richmond. It is not a law enforcement issue. It is a community issue. And put simply, it is an our issue. Thank you. Good afternoon. This morning, I woke shortly before 4 a.m to the sounds of gunshots in the distance, only to be updated later by Major Edwards that we had had a shooting in our district's Union Hill community. And that the individual, the, the young man, someone's brother, someone's father, someone's uncle, someone's relative, was in the hospital fighting for his life. Every incident of gun violence is tragic, every incident. But the number of gun violence and, and the number and the gun violence in our city is more than tragic. It's absolutely unacceptable. 
when we talk about gun deaths of mothers and babies and children and youth and other adults and the associated physical and psychological impact, it is more than tragic. It's absolutely unacceptable. But one of the things, and I think that you've heard thus far, that we're all committed to is working together. We know that working together collaboratively, collectively, that we can and we must do something about gun violence in our city. And so one of the major efforts and initiative announcements for today that the mayor has already shared is a declaration by the mayor and council that gun violence is a public health crisis in our community. That declaration will allow us to have access to additional resources that will allow us to be even more robust in undertaking strategies, some of which have been begun already, to address and to mitigate this problem in our community. So first is a declaration. Gun violence is a public health crisis. Second, it is the opportunity for us to increase our efforts to work collaboratively in coordination and network with the various agencies and city throughout our city that are currently involved from our VCU health systems, our city agencies, our community entities, our nonprofits, faith leaders, individuals, our residents and resident leader groups, our state and federal agencies, all of us have a role to play in addressing this public health crisis, gun violence in our city. And so I want to thank everyone in advance who've already been working, because I don't even want to suggest that work is not being done because it is. I do want to suggest that we now lean in and pull together all of these resources, these violence and gun violence prevention strategies in such a way that uh, they have the kind of impact that we're desirous of. The various practices, services, education, et cetera, citywide is going to be critical. And so I want to thank everyone who's been working already in advance in the various places and spaces that you've been working. I just left my district where there's a group, um, community safety uh, partnership group working around violence in our community. And I wanna thank them and I wanna thank all the groups that are working in your community because I know that there are and in the hospital settings in advance to say that what we've done is critical, but what we will do collectively and collaboratively will save lives. And that's what we're looking for. We want to rid our community of gun violence. I, I know you know the stats, I won't go through. When you talk about 13 persons killed in the U.S. every 13 minutes from gun violence, that's more than tragic. It's unacceptable. And we are, uh, we are committed, everyone here, to working collaboratively and collectively to address this in our city. Thank you. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to the Mayor's Task Force, the collaboration of all of my colleagues, stakeholders standing behind me, and most importantly, the countless community members, faith leaders, and advocates who have been doing this work tirelessly, tirelessly for decades to heal our trauma-impacted communities. We suffered an absolutely tremendous loss in our 5th District community on Tuesday when Shai Shai and Nana were tragically, tragically slain during a one-year-old's birthday party. I wish I could say that for many of those residents there, that was the first traumatic incident that they had witnessed or been a part of. 
But when we gathered around the table with many of those families, that was their third, fourth, and in some cases, fifth traumatic shooting that they had bared witness to. We are fighting a war against trauma in our communities. And like any war, we, it will take the collaboration across many different entities, the investment of government, of foundations, of many different stakeholders to fight these battlegrounds. And it starts with our community members who know best how to start the healing process and tell us what they need to start healing and growing and thriving. I cannot thank the stakeholders enough, the community members enough for coming to the table, for uh, wrapping their angel wings around us in the Midlothian Village community in the Belt Atlantic neighborhood, but for so many other uh, communities around in each of our city council districts and across the city that have been doing such impactful work. It is time now for us to turn our pain into production and turn our anger into action and invest in these efforts. Um, and I'm very proud of the work and the collaboration in this opportunity uh, and um, thank the mayor again and all of our stakeholders for being a part of this today.